Hello everyone, uh, this is Thomas. We'll, we'll do a short video on how to value options using binomial trees. Now let's step back and see why we need to do all these. Let's compare it to other assets we look at a lot. Let's look at equities first. If you need to value a share, what do you do? You look at the expected cash flow from the company. This can occur through many ways. You can look at the dividend that you can receive from the company, or you can look at the operating cash flow of the company. Another alternative might be looking at the free cash flow of the firm, or even the free cash flow to equity. So these are variations of cash flows that can come from the company itself as if you're a shareholder. The other common investment are fixed income. So for that, uh, you look at the expected cash flow from interest payments to bondholders and the eventual principal repayment at maturity from the bonds. Then we look at these expected future cash flow we find the present value of each one using a using an appropriate risk adjusted discount rate so after that we sum up all the present value of these expected future cash flow what do we have then we have the value of the share or the value of the debt based on the expected future cash flow and that is the valuation of our equity and fixed income so given that's the valuation of regular investments we have, what's so different about options? Here, options fall under a group of financial assets called derivatives. Here the name come about because the value of derivatives are derived from other financial assets. So if you look at a derivative by itself, there is really no inherent cash flow generated from an investment in the derivatives. In the example of our option here, there's even more feature that complicates matters. Here for the holder of the option, he has a choice to exercise or not. So understandably, if the situation is beneficial, he will exercise the option and profit. On the other hand, if the situation is not so good for him, he can decide not to exercise. So here we have what uh, generally is called a non or asymmetric payoff or non-symmetric or asymmetric payoff, meaning uh, when the underlying asset price moves up or down, his payoff is not the same. In the options case, when the underlying uh, asset moves up in price, he either profits or cap loss. When the underlying asset price moves down, he has a different payoff, dependent on what options he has. So given this asymmetric relationship, uh, the value of the option is not a direct relationship between the underlying asset price and the option value itself. So what do we do? So here, that's when the binomial tree approach comes in. This is used to capture this asymmetric payoff uh, approach or asymmetric payoff uh, uh, shape of the option.